Welcome to part two of our video about our bank holiday weekend in Austria and Germany. If you've not seen the first part of the video yet, you might want to watch that first, which covers what we did in Austria, as well as the new night jet sleeper train, which we've just got off as we arrive at Hamburg. As soon as we arrived, we took a 10 minute walk to the Meridian Hotel where we'd be staying that evening so that we could drop our bags off. We'd already booked our tickets to Miniature Wonderland online and we wanted to be there for around half eleven. At first we were going to get a taxi there but we decided to walk so that we could see as much of Hamburg as possible. It only took about 20 minutes to walk to Miniature Wonderland and it was quite a nice walk. We saw things like this big propeller from a ship on the way there. This was the first train that we saw at Miniature Wonderland. And once you move around the corner from this, you get to the new Monaco section. As a Formula 1 fan, I really enjoyed the Monaco section and it looks just like I expected it to look. The attention to detail is amazing, every boat, every balcony and every window seems to have somebody in it or somebody doing something. One of the most impressive things about Miniature Wonderland is how it cycles between day and night. Even when it's night time you can see here that the lights in the different windows keep turning on and off as if people are going into rooms and moving around. So it really adds to the atmosphere and makes it even more realistic. The railway stations and streets around them are packed with detail there's loads of figures on them, loads of cars, and a lot of the cars have got working lights and stuff, as you can see here. In some areas, the trains run on the glass sections of the floor. Not all the railways are flat, and this Swiss mountain part runs alongside the staircase which you go up to get towards the airport section, and it's a lot steeper than it looks in the video. Another great feature of this Swiss section is that it can be viewed from various balconies, giving you a proper bird's eye view and being able to take it all in at once. As you walk around there's a couple of sections like this where you can see underneath the layout too.
One of the most impressive parts of Miniature Wonderland is the airport. There's even a live departure board so you can keep an eye on what flights to look out for. It might not come across in the video, but the aeroplanes sound really good too. After watching the aeroplanes for a while, it was lunchtime, so we went to one of the on-site restaurants and had a burger. After lunch, we started at the German section and this famous scene with the fire engines. If you're enjoying the video, please leave a like or a comment to help more people find it. You even get to see one of the areas where everything's controlled from. The moving rides in the fairground section look particularly good at night. Big trains like this ICE look great around the long sweeping curves. There were more fire engines on the American section, but this one seemed to keep causing problems as it kept hitting a lamppost further along. This man had to come and sort out the problem caused by the fire engine. Yeah, I'm
the last section you get to is this rear section. There isn't as many railways on this as some of the others, but the detail's brilliant. It's probably some of the best work in the whole place. After seeing these impressive boats, we had a quick look at the gift shop and then got a taxi back to the hotel. The hotel had a great view across the water. We headed back towards the railway station where there were quite a few places to eat and settled on this nice Italian place. The next day the weather was really nice, so we walked back towards the centre of Hamburg and had a look at more of the sites and the shops. My favourite shop was this Porsche design shop, something that we don't have in the UK. There's also a big modern shopping centre and an Adidas shop which had the local football shirt. We were running out of time so we're headed back towards the hotel to get our bags. On the way back we had to walk past this section of railway just outside the station so I stopped so that I could video some of the trains which I hadn't seen before. Our time in Hamburg was over, so we got on the S-Bahn towards the airport. We realised that our train wasn't going to stop at the airport, so we got off at this small station, which just happened to have some good views of a depot, where you could see some shunters parked up. Our flight home was in two parts. We started with a flight from Hamburg to Amsterdam. It was a KLM flight, but it was chartered out to a Spanish company. About 15 minutes into the one hour flight, we were handed some mini cheddars and some bottles of water.
Amsterdam Airport was huge. We had about an hour and a half to kill there, so we had a look round some of the shops. Our second flight to Leeds and Bradford also took around an hour. It's the first time I've been on one of these city hopper planes. It definitely looked smaller from the outside than it felt from the inside. It didn't really feel any different to the other planes that we'd been on. It had been a busy but brilliant bank holiday weekend. We really enjoyed every part of it. My personal favourite part was the railjet sleeper train and it's definitely something that I'd like to go on again but it'd be nice to go to some different destinations so that we could see different parts of the world. Thanks for watching this video. It's been fun to record the journey and it's brought back some great memories whilst I was editing it.